What is going on guys? Ryan here, Champions for Life. So back at it again with a video talking about injury prevention. Because as you guys know, uh, fellow tennis fans, Matteo Berrettini suffered an injury in his left oblique. So he has to put up from the match against Zverev. And I want to share my thoughts on why he got the injury and, um, and my suggestions on what kind of exercise you can do to prevent such injuries if you have it or if you already have it, what you can do about it, okay? So injury to Matteo Berrettini is nothing new. You know, as you can see from the news, you know, uh, he said in an interview that when he was younger, you know, he was often injured. And it was like um, after 2019, you know, at the beginning of the 2020 season, you know, he said that. And like, uh, he also said that got a shoulder injury. And he also noticed other problems with his wrist, ankle, and back. So these are the things that you know, I'm going to explain later why these are all linked to his injury with his uh, left oblique, okay? And, and so another article saying that back in, I think it's uh, Australian Open, he said that I don't know what happened. I fell here under my rib, something that pulled. But the physio said nothing was pulled, you know, something like that. And notice, he said, under his rib, something pulled. And I want to emphasize this because it's exactly why his left oblique is injured. So here's an animation of the obliques, the left obliques. Okay, so it is comprised of the external obliques okay and the internal obliques which is this one right here so here we have the external oblique so i want to talk a bit about its origin first so where is it originated from well it's originated from the lower ribs does that ring a bell did you remember what matteo berrettini said it originated from there and it inserts inserts itself the iliac crest here and the pelvic bone. Okay, now let's look at what it does. Let's look at what the actions of the muscle is. So here we can see that the external obliques flex the trunk. Okay, so when you bend down, it flexes the trunk, okay, like that. And it rotates the trunk. So the external obliques, let's say you talk about the left side. So the left side of the external obliques flexes, no, it rotates the trunk to the other side. So it rotates it to the right. For the internal obliques, it rotates to the left, to so the same side. Okay, so bear in mind, bear in mind. And external obliques also flexes the trunk to the side, okay? For the internal obliques, it originates also from the lower ribs in this position right here, and it inserts to the pelvic bone. And its actions, it's very similar to the external obliques. It flexes the trunk forward, side to the, and to the side, and it rotates the trunk. To the same side okay so you have the external obliques that rotates to the opposite side and the internal one that flexes to is this to the same side so now with the anatomy out of the way i want to talk a little bit about uh his tennis game you know some specific points of his tennis game that is could potentially cause that injury okay so one of the things is is height okay he's six six okay so Put that in mind first, okay? And then the second point is his choice of backhand. So he's using a double-handed backhand instead of a single one. So I'm going to explain a little bit here. So we, we're looking at a practice session uh, back in 2020, but I want to illustrate how he executes a backhand and how he executes a forehand differently. Okay, so now he is going for a running backhand. So you can see that there is excessive flexion of his spine towards, you know, uh, forward. 
So as you can recall, that is one of the actions of the, uh, the obliques, okay? So remember this position right here. So I think there's excessive bending. I think he's, he's uh, crunching a lot, uh, maybe because of the height. He has to adjust to the ball height, so, and he is tall, so he has to bend down a little bit more. And uh, yeah, to me, he's sort of like muscling the back end. And for his forehand, it's a lot smoother in my opinion, because more, if I'll say more efficient transfer of force, more uh, smoother rotation. So I think there is less pressure on that particular muscle from the forehand side. And let's see, look at it again. And especially when he ends the shot, he tends to, he, he tends to sort of like crunch down a little bit more after a shot. So we can see it again here. He stays very low, no doubt about it. But when he stays in this position time and time again, because he is a baseline, so he hits a lot of his back end. Okay. Um, it's going to put continuous or constant or chronic pressure to the left oblique because it's constantly flexing, right? And what happens when it's constantly flexing? It becomes tight. Okay, it becomes tight, and it definitely contributes a lot to the injury because when it's constantly tight, when you have to extend it, when you, because you're not just hitting back and you're hitting the forehand. When you hit a forehand, you extend the left oblique first before contracting it, right? Because you're turning to the right. When you turn to the right, you use your extensive your your uh, external obliques. But your internal oblique is stretched. When it's suddenly stretched from a very tight position, that's where injury could occur. Okay. And I want to explain why the double handed backhand could also contribute to this problem. That's because if you use two hands, you have to reach for the ball, you have to be closer to the ball. So, what happens when you have to close to the ball when you're already that tall? You have to bend down a little more to, to get the shot. If you use a single hand backhand, you can reach more with, without like bending too much, you know, because you have more reach with one hand. You have less reach with two hands. Okay. So, so we can see that Matteo Berrettini, he's better with slices. He does a lot of backhand slices. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of his height. Maybe it's because of the discomfort or like a more difficulty. Like you have to muscle it when you. Do a double hand backhand. So it's easier to use a backhand size and then set up for his forehand. All right. So these two factors are gonna, like I said, put more load on his obliques. And there's another thing. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but he might have flat feet. It might not be a serious uh, condition, but it, what it could potentially transpire is that if you have a flat feet, that means your, your toes are pointing outwards, right? That means your foot collapses inwards, right? When your foot collapses inwards, that means your tibia also collapses. When it collapses, that means your knee is going to cave in, right? It's going to kick in to the midline. And what happens to your knee when it's kicked into the midline? That means your hip. You, now we are looking upwards, right? From the feet to the knee and now to the hip. When your knee caves in, that means your hip is internally rotated, internally rotated. What happens when your hip is internally rotated? That means your biggest muscle, your glute, gluteus maximus, it's constantly stretched because one of the main functions of gluteus maximus is to externally rotate the hip. But what, what if your hip is chronically in an internally rotated position? That means the muscle is stretched all the time. When you want to use it, it's going to require more force or more effort to activate it because you are essentially taking it out of a very uncomfortable position, okay, to do something that you're not, you're not used to or it's kind of hard to do, right? So... What happens when the glutes are weak? 
but there are a lot of rotation in tennis, obviously, right? There's a lot of external rotation in tennis. If your glutes are weak, that means it's going to find something else to compensate for it. So I think Matteo Berrettini has weak glutes, and so he is using more of the upper torso to perform the rotation. When normally, when you have strong glutes, when you have strong feet, you can generate a lot of force from the ground and using your hips to rotate, to transfer the energy up to, to your torso, upper torso, to your, to your arm, right? But that could not, that might not be like efficient energy transfer from the ground up. So he's using more of the upper torso, the muscle, to generate power and to muscle the ball. And what happens when you use too much of an upper torso? You create strain on the muscles, right? You create strain, in this case, to the left oblique. So a lot of factors, I think, could contribute to this injury. And those are just my, um, I, I'll say like an educated guess, you know, educated guess for me. So how do we strengthen? the obliques. So let's talk about the left obliques. If you want to prevent injury, the first exercise that you have to come to mind is the eccentrics. The eccentrics allow your muscle to withstand force in a stretched position. When it's stretched, it is prone to injury. But if your muscles are strong enough to withstand that force in a stretched position, you prevent injury. You lower the chance of injury. So for the internal left oblique, I would definitely recommend you do a band eccentrics. So you're going to pull from top right. So you have your band. It's like a farmer. You pull from the top right and then pull it down to a lower left. And as you slowly release it back to the top right, that's where the eccentrics come in. So you're going to do, let's say, like a, like a three or four second of uh, eccentrics and then come back down to the lower left side. It, it's going to be, for the external obliques, it's going to be the opposite. So you're going to use a band. You're going to pull from the top left, pull it down to the lower right, and then do the eccentrics, slowly release it back to the top left, three or four seconds, and then do it again. And it's definitely going to strengthen your obliques. And some of the muscle groups that you have to uh, strengthen, like your glutes overall, that's non-negotiable because it's essential for uh, rotational movements and uh, hip extension movements. And if you have flat feet, I would recommend you to do uh, strengthening exercises for your posterior tibialis because that is a muscle that, because you lose the arch, right? If you have flat feet. So what happens if you want the, the arch? There's a muscle that pull the arch back up, right? And that's the posterior tibialis. You want it to pull the inside of the feet up to make an arch. And how do you do it? Is by squeezing your big toe. If you squeeze a big toe, it forms an arch. If you don't squeeze a big toe, it, 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 it will probably stay flat. And if the muscle, the posterior tibialis is not strong, it cannot maintain the arch and it will collapse again. Okay, so for the posterior tibialis, I recommend you do a single leg standing band rotation. So you're going to stand on one leg and hold the band. And as you rotate the band from side to side, you stand on one leg and try to balance with that leg. And when you balance with the single leg, um, you squeeze the big toe to maintain that arch. Okay. And another exercise is to basically squeeze a tennis ball. So you're going to have a ball right underneath your, your big toe, and then you're just going to squeeze against it. The tennis ball is soft, so it's not going to hurt you, but you're going, you're going to squeeze it for maybe like uh, four to five seconds and then take a little break and then do it again. Uh, great exercise for your big toe and for your glutes as well. Okay. But if you're injured already, Let's say you already have a oblique injury or you have a history of injury in your obliques, then I would suggest you to go um, safe 
to go safe by first doing isokinetic exercise. So you're gonna do the same exercise that I just mentioned, but with a slow, constant pace. So you're not doing it eccentrics, where you, when you're releasing the band, you go slowly and then you go fast when you're flexing the muscle. You don't have any sort of change in the tempo of the execution. It's gonna be the same pace, slow, back and forth, constant pace, okay? And you can also do uh, other parts of the body to strengthen it. So you might want to skip the obliques first to let it recover. So you might want to do glutes first, you know, or your or your feet first, or other parts first. Um, obviously, you know, if it's hurting too much, then definitely you want to rest your obliques first before you do any sort of uh, exercises again. Okay. So that's my interpretation of Matteo Berrettini's injury in his uh, left oblique. And I hope you guys enjoy the video and stay strong.